Once upon a time. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. There was a girl. And she rode upon the back of a great fox. But they were lost. They had always been lost. Until a path appeared. And so she followed. Lost and bewildered, cast into a dream world, a girl and her fox attempt to make sense of their predicament. The first two minutes of Epistory build on a structure of cautious optimism. That feeling of, let's see where this goes, for the sake of actually visually seeing where it goes. Though, as a typing-centered game, you'd be forgiven for thinking that Epistory is a game about words, but it's not about the words. It has a story too, but it's also not really about the story either. This ambiguity is in fact a running theme of Epistory, and one of its core components that make up the entire experience, at least until the end, which I won't spoil. It is a little frustrating to be met with a lack of grip so early on, and in some ways it can invoke thoughts that this might be a necessary melodrama on behalf of the game. Theatrics and exaggerations, meant to throw the player into an emotional bubble, as opposed to giving context to its world. She found herself alone, lost in darkness. The scattered voice notes that litter Epistory's finely crafted paper planes often give very little insight as to what you, the player, are doing, for example. There are no item descriptions you can read or NPCs you can talk to, no cutscenes to give exposition. And I didn't like this at first. I don't like having more basic questions than basic answers so early on. I like to know where I stand and who I am, what I'm doing here. But this sense of being lost and confused was in essence Epistory's point, which we'll get to later. I jumped into this game completely blind as a raw technical exercise. I wanted to write creatively on something fresh to let my thoughts and ideas about its concepts come naturally, organically. It was important that I didn't know anything about Epistory before I started. That being said, I ended up coming out the other side with an existential crisis on what games could and even should be providing a player. What outcomes should a game even strive to achieve? On the surface, this seems like a simple question, but in reality, the very notion of how art should be perceived in this form is a deep and sometimes unnerving topic. This was one of those rare cases of analyzing my experience early on as a negative one, only to later have that ah moment in which all the pieces or origami folds in this case come together and its purpose was sort of clumsily revealed. But let's cover the basics first. All of the abilities in Epistory come from your own ability to type. The better you are, the easier the game will be, but there is a dynamic difficulty setting in order to keep you on your toes. Each displayed word can be used to attack or defend yourself against swarms of enemies, or used to unlock unopened doors, ignite braziers, and destroy debris blocking pathways. This is a core mechanic of the game, and these words are displayed above the target, filling as you type each letter. Time is of the essence, and the quicker you can type correctly, the more time you'll have to successfully fight off enemies and complete time-based challenges. Points are garnered after successful completion of words, regardless of the context. Filling up the experience bar at the bottom of the screen provides you with a couple of points to be spent on upgrades in the menu. Epistory does have some RPG elements baked in, which make the process of progress more enjoyable. In the upgrades menu, you can speed up your little fox to make journeying and exploring faster, for example. Placing your points in specific places in the skill tree can cause enemies to be frozen in place or knocked back with gusts of wind after typing a word successfully, although the latter can be frustrating when an enemy is knocked off the screen, thus hiding its word from the player. 
Furthermore, there can be quite a few enemies on screen at one time during a dungeon arena fight. And if you're unlucky enough to accidentally start typing to switch an element before trying to type the word above the enemy, the game will prioritize the element switch first, locking you out of completing the word above the target's head. This has got me killed a few times as my attention is focused on the swarms and micromanagement, not on the elements below, frustrating to say the least. Make sure you keep an eye on this if Epistory is a game you're intending to play in the future. Alongside the aspect of typing as a game mechanic, navigation of its ethereal paper-made world still remains the forefront in Epistory's downfall early game. You can but shouldn't play this on a controller, for example. WASD to move are the intended controls here, and since typing is a required aspect of gameplay, you might as well use one tool instead of two. The problem is, this is really clunky sometimes. The direction you face and move is grid based, up, down, and diagonally too. Movement isn't supposed to feel completely analogue, but if you pair this style with slippery late 90s ice level sections akin to the days of Croc or Harry Potter, this awkwardness really starts to grate. Sections where there are ice sheets cause your fox to indefinitely skid until stopped by a wall or an obstacle. While this is intended by the developers and used to great effect in several puzzles, it is a little bit difficult to get used to and can make the experience frustrating at times. Epistory's art style is beautiful. Its vibrant paper and card textures fill the world in such a way that doesn't feel overbearing or overwhelming on the eye. Its landscapes fall naturally across the plains and its simplicity makes it obvious which areas are accessible and which aren't. Combined with soothing delicate soundscapes during exploration, it makes for an enjoyable experience that allows the player to take the game at their own pace. Sound is a key feature here in Epistory. The pen scribbles you hear when you engage in typing, the unfolding ASMR-like sounds of generated landscapes are remarkably comforting. Downtime between fights or puzzles is often met with gentle auditory cues as well, such as the running water sound in the background of this late game clip. It's all very cozy and soothing for the most part. While being an enjoyable experience overall, I was left in this limbo of wondering whether I was playing a game or a technical demo. Do I or should I care about the girl on the fox for any other reason than she gets me from A to B? Are the words written and spoken of the girl, the fox? Perhaps the narrator whose purpose is to give the world some depth. These thoughts lay scattered across the land as you progress and this is where some of the confusion might first establish itself. Epistory doesn't really give too much away, and you're left to your own devices when interpreting its story and what your goals are. It wasn't until about halfway through Epistory that it hit me and I realised what the game was trying to convey. It wasn't trying to tell me the story, at least not through traditional means. It was trying to get me to experience what a creative block might feel like from the perspective of creative storytelling. And also what approaching creative writing might look like from a different perspective to interlink creative exploration and wordplay with gameplay elements. There's a hazy story behind its exterior. One that centers on finding one's way in a particularly hazardous and unforgiving environment. It's presented in such a way that these cogs of uncertainty can just about fit anywhere at some point in our lives. Anxiety, confusion, ostracization, it's relatable on a low resolution scale to most people, fitting the themes of Epistory quite well. And that's what it's really about, to me at least. It's about themes, not words. It's about the anxiety of having raw and tangible emotions in a creative space and not being able to connect with that in a meaningful way. To produce it, write it, say it. The hordes of enemies closing in while you furiously type to save your life is scary 
and not just in a video gamey way, but also in a, oh shit, I have to finish this piece of work before a deadline, or I can't find the words to tell this person how I feel sort of way. There is, however, a bit of a disconnect between the link of typing itself and the themes of loss and misplacement. Too much of my ability is used to clear a path, and there really isn't a way to stretch your legs and be creative with these ideas. That is to say that Epistory wants you to type, but it's more of a tool than an art. This concept remained close to the surface of Epistory, and in a way left me coming along for the ride rather than playing a meaningful acting part in piecing together its fantasy world. I don't know if Epistory is a good game when comparing it to traditional video game forms, and I think reviews judging it on this nature can miss the points mentioned above. It was certainly a new experience, and I'd say it was worth the 4-5 to five hours I put in, but there is also a conflict for me here. It's difficult to quantify my experience with it. I didn't leave with any long-lasting contemplations that I usually expect to find in myself after finishing a heartfelt story. On one hand, I really like how many elements of Epistory are relatable on a foundational scale. Struggling to do something creative is a hard and often grinding process, but on the other hand, I never really got anything tangible from its story, its perspective. That lack of solid story elements and constant ambiguity means you're just floating all the time, skipping from one idea to the next with a focus on gameplay for breaks in between. It's fun for a while and I don't dislike it, but I felt like I was on a conveyor belt, passing through a fever dream of scattered thoughts. I believe this was intentional, and if that's the case, then I also find it hard to understand where exactly the line lies between a piece of art that projects a commentary on struggle and perseverance and a video game attempting to do the same thing. Perhaps there is none. Perhaps I should just appreciate it for what it is, a game showing how frustrating creative blocks can be and in turn how disconnecting for a while and taking time to focus your perspective elsewhere can often lead to new refreshing ideas. Don't overthink it, right?